Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to have a look at the Cube Controls F Core, the new entry level wheel by Cube Controls. So, as always, we'll start with a disclaimer. The wheel was provided by Cube Controls for this review, but they don't get to see the video or the script before it's posted, and all the opinions are my own. The wheel, as I have it here with dual clutch and the hub, is 629 euros plus taxes but you can also get it without clutches and without the hub for 469 or 524 no clutches but with the hub all these prices are without taxes so the clutches are relatively cheap at 105 euros but the problem is if you want the clutches you also have to buy the hub i don't know why but you cannot buy the wheel with just the clutches doesn't really make a lot of sense but it is what it is and the wheel is sitting in that medium price range where it doesn't really have a lot of competition i can't really think of anything that comes close to the function and build of this and costs about the same price but more and more companies are actually starting to develop cheaper wheels so i guess we'll see more competition in this price range soon so like with all cube controls products the presentation is nice it comes in a really nice looking box very nice packaging very nice presentation it feels like a high quality product when you unbox it and i always think the unboxing experience somehow like if you just get a brown box with a wheel in it that works but it's definitely nice if you have some nice presentation when you unbox it the wheel feels very solid it's not like okay entry level made out of plastic or something no it's just as rigid as any other wheel that i've tried here it definitely looks cheaper than other cube controls wheels but i guess at that price point that can be expected and i also am personally not the biggest fan of these crazy colored buttons but that's highly subjective okay i want to start with specs and build quality first so we do have a four millimeter carbon fiber front looks very pretty with the grips directly molded onto the carbon fiber it is slightly more rigid if you mold onto the aluminum but i think it's a very negligible difference so there is some tiny flex in the grips but way less than on some other wheels that i've tested so no complaints here the back of the wheel is a die cast aluminum body cheaper than cnc but definitely not worse in terms of quality or in terms of looks it definitely makes sense if you plan to sell a lot of wheels die cast makes sense because in the long run it's just cheaper than cnc the diameter of the wheel is 290 millimeter right in the sweet spot we have 12 buttons in the front on the rear there are two shifters two clutches two optional clutches and we have four rotaries two on the front two thumb rotaries two funky switches in a good position the wheel can connect via usb or via bluetooth and the weight is less than one kilogram in the base version definitely one of the lightest wheels that i've tested so far we will start with the back of the wheel first if we look at the shifters it is some nylon carbon fiber injected shifters a little more fancier name for plastic shifters and while they feel decent when you're driving you definitely notice that this is a lower priced wheel especially at the shifters they just don't feel as premium as other options out there like for example if i shift i can still like push it a little further which is not really a big deal but it's just you notice that this is a cheaper product when you look at the shifters the activation force needed to actually push the shifters down i measured at 6.4 newton that is definitely in the lower end of shifters i wish the activation force was a little bit higher i do have some accidental shifts with this wheel but i would say it's still in an okay range the travel of the shifter is relatively low feels pretty nice and one thing i did not like about it is if you look closely i actually installed the shifter pedals upside down because in the standard orientation, I don't know, like if I hold the wheel like this, it was just like the shifters are too high. So this is not ideal, but better than the standard position for me. So if you struggle with the position of the shifter, try that out as well. You can adjust the distance of the shifter pedal in this direction here. As you can see, there are these elongated holes where you unscrew the screws and then you can change the position in this direction. The shifters also are relatively quiet. They don't have any dampers installed, but it's not a metal on metal contact. Obviously, these are made out of plastic and the plastic to plastic contact is just not as loud as if it was metal. So in this regard, they are actually really nice. The technology in the shifters, they use a hall sensor. In my opinion, the best technology that you can use for shifters because it will not wear. If you use switches, you can have a more defined shifting point. But the problem is switches will wear and break after some time. So this will not happen with hall sensors. If we look at the clutches, the build of the clutches is really, really good. Very premium looking clutches. I like that. We have bearings on the pivot points. There's zero flex in the clutches. Really nice. The gap between the pedal and the grip is relatively high. If you have small hands, you will definitely struggle to reach these. For me, it's fine, like barely, but still okay. Then the adjustability, you can increase the throw if you want to by loosening the screw here, but the 
shortest throw already is more than enough in my opinion so i left that in the default position apart from that there's the same adjustability as with the shifters you have these elongated holes you can in theory put the pedals even more to the outside but the most inside position is fine for me and in terms of feeling apart from the big gap to the pedal i think this is one of the nicer clutches that i've tried in any wheel so i think cube controls did a really good job there but there's also something i do not like about the clutches they kind of tend to lose the calibration sometimes so i calibrate them then turn off the pc come back to the pc next day and then they would just sit at five or six percent of input i had to recalibrate the clutches and they kind of react a little bit slow to the changes if you compare it to some other clutches where it's basically instantaneously it feels like the software filtering in the firmware is a little bit too high and they actually slightly lag behind your inputs if it is a filtering issue then it would be easy to change in the firmware. But to sum it up, I think the build quality and everything is very good. The functionality itself can be improved. The byte point for the clutches can be either adjusted in the software, I'll show you the software later, or you can also assign one of the encoders to be able to adjust the byte point on the fly. The cable, very nice. It's like, like an Apple MagSafe. It's a magnetic connector. Don't be like, oh my god, a magnet, this will definitely unattach itself. I've had zero issues in the hardest crashes. This would not unattach itself. And even if it did, if you have such high forces on a cable that this will come off, then it's probably better that the cable can come off than if you have a static fixed connection. So I think this is a really good idea by Cube Controls. They had some issues with their old cable. I've had zero issues with this new magnetic cable. So really good. You can also connect it via Bluetooth. I've tried that briefly. Latency was not noticeable the battery apparently lasts about 50 hours but i just use the cable and i don't have to think about did i charge the wheel i don't know the cable doesn't bother me at all but if you want to you can use bluetooth and it's not a proprietary connection it's just standard low latency low power bluetooth so you can use it with any pc the back body is like i said die cast aluminum very high quality and the bolt pattern on the wheel is 50.8 millimeters if you want to attach a 70 millimeter quick release then you need the spacer you can either get the one from cube controls or just get a third party adapter but i think the one from cube controls is not very big so that is good and it's also reasonably priced if we look at the front we have 12 plastic push buttons they feel very nice and tactile and clicky they are relatively loud as you can probably hear in the microphone i'm not a big fan that every freaking button has a different color but that's highly subjective if you like it, it's good I don't. The button activation force I measured at 5.1 Newton. That is pretty good. And overall, it's just definitely one of the better buttons on steering wheels that I felt. The surrounding of the buttons is made out of a relatively cheap looking plastic. But then again, we are looking at an entry level wheel. And by the way, entry level, I know some people will be like, oh my god, this is 470 euros in the cheapest version. This is not entry level. We are talking about entry level into high end wheels, not entry level into sim racing. You can buy a used G27 for 100 euros and have tons of fun with that. Don't understand that wrong. We are really talking about the entry into the high end market here. Then we also have two toggle switches on the front here that also have some LED that signal the position. But you have to be careful here it's a bit strange it works like a push button basically so this and this will just send short joystick impulse and it's the same button number so let's say you want to put this to ignition for the car then you need to make sure that it's flipped to the off position before you launch the game because otherwise if it's like this and then you're in the game and you like want to turn on the ignition then you have to put it it's a bit weird. I wish this was at least configurable to be on off or like two different buttons and not the same button number that just quickly toggles. But then again, the support in the games to use different button numbers is probably limited. So yeah, this might be a good compromise. It's just keep in mind that you manually have to sync these buttons before you start the game. Then we also have two funky switches in a very good position. You will definitely not trigger these accidentally, like for example, on the grid MPX, the button knob also for the encoders is made out of plastic but to be honest if you're wearing gloves you don't notice it at all if you're not wearing gloves the only way how to find out that you're using plastic knobs is it doesn't feel cold to the touch like aluminum but honestly whether this is aluminum or plastic i couldn't care less it still looks good it feels good and you know then four encoders two thumb rotaries pretty cool at that price point and two encoders in the front all of these encoders do not have push buttons to have like a second layer or something. So this is just left, right. They are very easy to 
turn, not a high resistance. I measured them at 1.55 Newton centimeters of rotational force. I personally don't have a big problem with easier to rotate encoders, but some people don't like it. So these are definitely on the lighter side. And I really like these two thumb rotaries. It's coming in very handy. I am playing more ACC lately. And there you adjust brake bias and traction control during the lap in many scenarios. And it's just very handy to have it here. I adjust the brake bias with this. I adjust the traction control with this. It's really useful and I don't really want to miss thumb encoders anymore. Then we also have two status LEDs on the front. This is just the charging LED and the Bluetooth connection LED. We are running wired, so this is off right now. And in the box, you also get a sticker sheet. I put some on here, as you can see. The black stickers make the colorful buttons look less colorful, so I like that. Uh, stickers, decent quality, not as good as something like the grid, for example, but I would still say they are high quality stickers. Then, in terms of ergonomics, this wheel is insanely nice. With my hands, these grips are nearly perfect. They are not as chunky as a GSI wheel, for example, but they are definitely not a pencil grip size. So I really think Cube Controls absolutely nailed it with the ergonomics of the grips. I love them. I think the material is amazing. They are now made out of silicon and not this super hard rubber that Cube Controls used on their other wheels. I think it's much better than anything they have ever used. And I hope this material will also be used on all future wheels. It's amazing in your hands without gloves. It's super grippy with gloves. To me, this is probably as close to the perfect grip as it gets. Also, the size, 29 centimeters, works very well. GT cars, Formula cars, it's a nice compromise. It's the perfect sweet spot. 29, 30 centimeters, I think is the best. I wouldn't want to go smaller than this, but 29 feels really, really good. Then I measured the grips. I have to look at my notes here at the top. Circumference is 121 millimeters at the thickest part, roughly. It's always hard to measure this. At the bottom, it's 118 millimeters. And the top cutout is about 37, and the bottom cutout 54 millimeters. No problem to fit three fingers here and and it's just an insanely ergonomic meal. Meal? Honestly, if cube controls would make like a higher quality version of this with maybe RGB buttons and aluminum shifters, this could probably become my main wheel because it's just it's so comfortable in my hands and I really love it. Then there's also a software for the wheel. I'll quickly show you the features here. So this is the first page inputs. You can see if all the buttons work. You can test the wheel. Very nice to have. You can also configure the encoder pulse width here. I don't really think it's really needed. It's a nice to have but typically just set this to the lowest value. I have yet to try a game where a value like 40 milliseconds will make you skip inputs. So I would just set this to the lowest and be good. A GSI would recommend actually 30 milliseconds for the wheels. The only issue that you can face is sometimes on ACC, if you want to assign buttons with low values like 30, 40 milliseconds, it will take a few attempts till the menu registers your inputs, but then in the game, it's always fine. So... That's just like who knows things, I guess. But if you struggle on ACC, don't increase this number. Just take a few attempts to assign your buttons and then use it in game and it will be good. And what you can also see here is the slight delay that I mentioned on the clutches. It's just, it lags slightly behind. It's not a big deal, but you can see if I quickly pull and release the clutches, it's just, yeah. Then you can also calibrate them here. Click calibrate, use the clutch. You can also see like how little the raw value the clutches actually use. Click on save and then you calibrate it. Same on the other side. Doesn't work. Why? I guess I have to disable the clutch byte point. Yeah, exactly. Same issue as on their pedals. Yeah, cube controls and software. Eh. If you figure out the oddities, then it works fine, but like it's still confusing. Like if I set a byte point, then I cannot calibrate the clutch anymore. Okay. You can also adjust the byte point here in the software, or you can assign a rotary encoder, for example, here. Just keep in mind, if you use a rotary encoder for this, then you can't use it in game anymore. One thing I noticed, if you turn the encoders really quick, it will skip steps independent of the setting here. You can see it here. If I turn them quickly, then it will go into the wrong direction sometimes. Encoder debouncing is a really critical and not easy to do topic. And cube controls, yeah, I mean, it's okay. I've definitely seen much better processing for encoders, but I've also seen worse, so probably in the midfield. You can also set the left clutch as a master clutch or the right clutch as a master clutch. A dual clutch pretty much has one pedal that goes from zero to byte point and the other that goes from zero to 100%. And then on the launch, to just drop 
the master clutch and then slowly release the bite point clutch and like that you will then get a better launch then here you can also calibrate the shifters it is a hall sensor shifter, so it's pretty much like the clutch in terms of how it works so if you ever have the problem that you need to pull the shifter too hard or it shifts too early go to the pedal menu go to shifters click on calibrate press it and then click this and then the shifter is recalibrated and then you can do the same on the right side. When I got the wheel, this calibration was completely off, but I just calibrated them and it has been perfectly fine since then. And then there's firmware update, nothing here. You can also do manual update and some other stuff. So I don't know, cube controls and software is just not a good combo. The wheel software also has the same problem that I cannot move the window on triple screens. I don't know why. I have the same on both my PCs. It works on NVIDIA Surround, but if you use three separate screens, then I just can't move it. It's not a big deal, but yeah. Then electronics, I opened the wheel. Electronics, it looked fine apart from the cables for the clutches. I don't know if this is maybe like a prototype wheel that was assembled differently, but I've had squished cables where the isolation was pretty much done and I could see the bare wires. It still works fine. I re-isolated the wires, put it back together. Even if there's an issue like that in the production, I'm sure they are testing the wheels before they ship. And it's unlikely that something will fail over time. So if it works after their initial test, then you should be good. It's just, yeah, I was a bit surprised when I opened the wheel and saw that. But yeah, they use lower priced components in there on the PCB. But in the end, if it works, that's fine. And I've had zero issues with this wheel. So that's good. So how does it feel? While driving, let's quickly hop onto the track. We are in the new Porsche around Zolder. And um, I'll take you with me for a lap here. So overall, I think at this price point, the wheel just has no competition. I was very pleasantly surprised how well this wheel feels in your hands. And I think Cube Controls did a really good job here. All the buttons are in a nice, to reach position also the funky switches like i said earlier to me this is one of the best positions because it's easy in reach and you will not accidentally trigger some random inputs like on some other wheels oh god zolder chicanes the thumb rotaries here for example to adjust the brake bias same problem here if you turn it really quickly it will skip inputs but yeah, I mean, if you know that, you just turn it a bit slower and then it's fine. And like I said, the PWM encoder pulse width setting doesn't really help here. It's more like the internal processing of the encoders. But it's, it's still okay. If you really compare it to higher end wheels, the biggest difference definitely for me are the shifters. These feel cheaper than others. I mean, they work just as well. And if you're immersed in the game, if you're not sitting there trying to find flaws of wheels, if you just use it, I doubt that you will ever be like focus on the race and be like, oh, don't, oh shit, oh that sh that shift, yeah, it doesn't didn't feel as as clicky and nice as it could have felt with an aluminum shifter. They are worse, they are definitely worse, but they are still decent shifters. Another thing I like is the cheap upgrade for the clutches, 105 euros or whatever that was. That is very affordable. They are great clutches. I think they should tweak the software filtering a little bit. Not a big deal for ACC, but uh, if you actually want to use dual clutches, where in a situation where really every millisecond counts, well, you want the clutch that reacts quicker than this one. For most people, it's probably not a big deal. And another thing that would be nice is a feature to map the clutch axis to buttons. Especially for a game like ACC, you will never need a dual clutch here. It would be nice to use the clutches to look left, right. You can do that with Joy to Key, but it uh, would be nice if that was in the firmware. But yeah, ergonomically, this is definitely among the best wheels that I've tried. The grips are, in my opinion, the perfect size. And the material feels really, really good. It's not too soft, it's not too stiff. It's very grippy. I mean, it will definitely attract dirt and everything and dust because that's just like how these silicon grips are but not hard to clean and yeah it's it feels really really good i love these kind of grips because i really like to drive without gloves and that is just the perfect grip honestly i think cube controls did an amazing job on these grips 
But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below or join the Discord or catch me live on Twitch. I'm streaming every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. And if you liked the video, maybe give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to not miss future videos. And yeah, I hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.